I'm Bill Ryan, and I'm the author of the serpo.org website, which uh, went online in the middle of November 2005. And one of the features of the website was a contact form in which I encouraged visitors to the website to contact me with any information, comments, thoughts, questions that they might want to have. And of course, my original intention was to encourage a dialogue about Serpo itself. But right from the start, I was aware of the possibility that people might get in touch to talk about anything else, uh, which of course I welcomed. And one such here is a man who I'm talking to. It's a very great pleasure. I'm not going to identify him for obvious reasons. And he has a very interesting story to tell about his personal interaction with relics and documents and artifacts and films from a whole series of uh, alien encounters starting off with Roswell in 1947 and it became very clear that after this man contacted me just saying that he had an interesting story to tell and told me one or two little details about that I picked up that ball, recognizing that there's something here of some considerable importance. This has got nothing to do with the Serpo story, but it should be something that's of considerable uh, interest to every serious student of ufology. And I wonder if I could just ask you to summarize your story just in a couple of sentences, just so the, the viewers here will get an idea of why it was that I immediately seized on what you had to say and saw that it was important. Well, I had uh, my ori my original contact had been that uh, I had seen nothing in my experience uh, that had to do with the Serpo story, but that I had other information. And uh, what that basically what that information was was that I spent six months at an aerospace company. I'm not a military person. I never was in the military. I spent six months archiving and filing artifacts, videos, films, pictures, and documents having to do with the government's involvement in UFO projects, research, and that sort of stuff. And this was, this was in, in which year? In the 1980s? This was, yeah, 84, 85. All right. And what did your job exactly entail, and what kind of material did you find yourself holding in your hands during that time? Well, I was a, pretty much a file clerk with a, a security clearance. <laughs> And uh, I was brought items each day, and sometimes they were uh, to be divided up into different branches of service. Sometimes they were to be divided up in classifications. Sometimes they were to be divided up as to what the content was inside them. Um, most of them were sealed. Uh, but there were artifacts from crash ships. There were disks from crash ships. There were mostly pictures and documents from the U.S. government, and all branches of the government and also from aerospace companies. Could you tell us what kinds of stamps these documents contain? What kind of, uh, stamps, classification stamps, uh, top secret, uh, secret eyes only, secret code word. Um, a lot of them were uh, to, uh, only to be opened by authorized personnel. I mean, I worked in, uh, in documentation, so I knew the markings on documents, and I knew what I should have been able to see, and in my regular line of work and what, you know, things that were marked incorrectly, I had to mark also correctly. So I was involved in that sort of stuff in my work. Um, a lot of them were military that, that were not marked with any classifications whatsoever, which to me was kind of odd, but that's the way part of them were. They were just sealed envelopes with no markings whatsoever. And what, okay. what caught your eye um, the first time you, you came across this information that, that actually sort of turned your head? Uh, well, it, um, it is something that I had believed in for quite a long time, and to be able to actually see proof uh, 
to me was probably one of the best things that has ever happened to me. That's the way I felt about it. I can really imagine this. How old were you approximately? I mean, were you in your 20s in or in your 30s? 20s, in, in, it was in your 20s. In my 20s. And since you started to come out with this information, one or two people have called you Roswell Man. Is this just because of, I mean, was this material just from the Roswell crash or was it from other, other let's say, interactions and time periods also? Oh yeah, other, it, it was material um, for the lack of, the quest for, and the gathering of knowledge uh, to do with doing with extraterrestrials and vehicle crashes and recoveries and equipment recoveries, that sort of stuff. All kinds of stuff. So in fact it was a whole cross-section of government alien interaction between 1947 and and the early well, 1980s. The present days, yeah. Wow, okay. Um, now you mentioned that there, you, you noticed there were a number of crashes and you actually told, told us a number. Can you tell me what, what was that number of crashes that, that's happened over the years? It's over 50. Over 50? Over, over 50. Over 50 crashes on American soil? Uh, American and abroad. And abroad. And these were documented These crashes. were documented crashes, over 50 crashes. Do you have any any idea um, of the number of different alien species that were involved in these crashes? Um, no, that that's knowledge that I can't remember or can't recall. But I do remember coming across at least five different types. And did you see photographs of these beings? Uh, I think four. I did four different kinds. You saw photographs of four different beings. Could you describe them? Well, there was uh, my favorites. Always the tall were the tall orange ones, which the in, do in documentation mm -hmm. it was stated that they were the creators of what we call the grays, the common gray aliens with the kind of the pointed chin. The the orange ones were taller, thinner, had a more round face, but still had the large eyes. Those were the two most prevalent. There was also another race that were almost like the greys but maybe a little bit more pale and a little bit more stocky but the same type of size. Like almost cousins to greys, almost. And then there were there was talk in pictures of beings that looked just like you and I only had light skin, sort of like Mr. Ray in here with the, the blue eyes and lighter hair though. And the, are those, those the Nordic were, types? Those are the Nordic types. Those are the Nordic yes. types. Those were the ones that, from what I've been reading on the internet, that, and I never read documentation of this, that offered to save us if we disarmed our nuclear weapons and that sort of thing. Okay. But you never saw any documentation not on about that. that interaction? No, I did not. All right. Okay. Was, was there documentation about the purpose behind the visit, the visitors, in other words, why they were here? Yes, there was. It was. Uh, it had to do with uh, them fearing our nuclear capabilities and uh, both destroying ourselves and maybe other species out in space because we were getting awful close to space travel at that time. And was this a, a, a hypothesis from the government, or was this something that you you read in the documentation as something that was definitively known? And this was definitively known through contact. Okay, th through contact. Through contact. Did they did they explain how they communicated with the aliens in these in this documentation? Most of it was telepathic. Telepathic. Yes. Did they reference uh, remote viewing or how you know the humans were, were conducting that? Uh, Do you mean telepathic in a person to person sense? Correct. Okay. Correct. In being to to human telepathically, okay. where they could sit there across like you and I are sitting. And I would just have to look at you, and you'd know what I want, and we'd be communicating through our minds, that sort okay. of stuff. Did you have any kind of, um, any sense of how many of those beings were, let's say, active guests of the American government in such a way that communication like that was possible? Was it just one or two? Or Personally, was it probably maybe five to ten, but it, it, as far as my knowledge, I think there's, in my opinion, there was way more. Okay. In my opinion. But your documentation reflected five or ten. What I saw was, what I came across looking at documents mm. was evidence of five to ten. Okay. What else 
did these aliens reveal about themselves in this ongoing dialogue with the uh, with the American government? Oh uh, well, they claim to have been our uh, that we are descendants of them, that we were actually put here on Earth from their genetic material that we were genetically engineered and put here, and that we were one of their life creations. That was the one major thing that I that I read. Also, they also claimed that uh, they were the ones that were responsible for putting Jesus Christ on this earth to teach us spirituality and to get us to evolve past the greed and what the Bible calls sin. I think it's just, I really don't know what it is. I just know that there's a human condition that causes us to to want to preserve ourselves. and It causes greed and, and life survival skills and that sort of stuff. And was that specifically mentioned in the documentation? Um, it was alluded to. It was alluded to. I wouldn't to. say that it was specifically spelled out that way, but it was alluded What to. was alluded to? Could you like reiterate what was alluded to as, uh, as opposed to what was said? The teaching of, uh, teaching of humankind to evolve to a higher plane to where we would realize that we're all one species and we're of the same material both energy and physical and there's no need to fight wars with one another and there's no need to have currency and I mean it's that sort of earthly stuff that we kind of pride ourselves on and get our identity from because according to them they don't have that they don't see their bodies like we see ours it's not a it's not it's not a possession to them it's a vehicle written documents what photographs. The photographs contain pictures of um, uh, biological entities um, ships flying mostly flying ships and a lot of them from far away but some good reports and sightings from that were labeled Apollo and the oh, space the shuttle, shuttle missions and, and okay. space shuttle missions too okay photographs from the space shuttle mm -hmm. missions yes and older photographs uh, black and white grainy older photographs from uh, Are there imagine. any particular photographs that come to mind that really stuck in your mind that you well, remember all these years? Well, what I'd said in the old in the other interview that I conducted was uh, what got to me the most at first was that I saw pictures, and this was labeled Hawaii uh, with a typewriter, so they were pretty old pictures, they were black and white, of a ship entering or and or going into the water and seeing no splash. Okay. Of, a, of a craft, a saucer-shaped craft, and all I could see on it was lights, and it wasn't blurry at all. It was a pretty good photograph. From from what kind of range? Mm, I'd say probably five or six hundred yards, maybe okay. a quarter of a mile away. Okay. So well, on an eight by ten, the disc was like two inches, two and a half inches. So okay. it was a pretty good, pretty good shot. Okay. So, and that left a real mark on you when you. When you yeah, when it. I saw that, I'm like, wait a minute, because I'd never thought about that aspect of, of extraterrestrials, mm. that, that they would even think to enter the water, I wouldn't think, or later on thinking about it, it's like maybe that's where they came out of. Well, water is just another yeah. fluid. Water, right. air, it doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's just more dense than air. Just going back to the, um, the aliens themselves, was there any documentation about where these guys came from? Uh, the only documentation I saw jibes with the Serpo story about Zeta Reticuli. Zeta Reticuli. All right. And no mention of any other star system or no or source. Okay. And was there anything there that could be interpreted as being threatening to the human race or to individuals? For instance, was there anything there about abductions or about um, complicity with any kind of control scenario over the population? Nothing whatsoever. What about alien technology? Was there any uh, indication that we were getting um, you know, technological um, ideas from, the, from them? There was, there was documentation on receiving items but not getting any manuals. That sort of stuff. Where we had to reverse Like, here it is, look at it and check it out, and this is what it does, and here it is. Okay. Any recollection there about in what realm that technology, anything? I mean, are we talking about power sources? All I can remember, power source, I remember power source, but more communication. Communication, communication devices. Communication, yeah. 
What do you recall about that? And no weapons that I remember at no, all. No, no weapons. Nothing about weaponry. Yeah, they didn't... We were supplied no weapons. What do you recall about the communication devices? Are you talking about... Not a lot, just that they were, there were people assigned to try to figure out how this thing works. Okay. Not, not any information about what it did. Okay. Or how far it reached. What did you learn about the, um, at the risk of, of uh, using the word in the incorrect context, the spiritual context of these aliens? Um, in what, I mean, did you learn anything about the way that they, uh, that they related to whether they had a spirit or a soul as opposed to just being mechanical entities? Yes, no, they, they definitely uh, had communicated to us that they were spiritual like we were. So they had likened us to them, or them to us, in whatever context. Uh, and they talked about recycling their bodies and not their bodies. They didn't look at their bodies as a possession. They looked at their bodies as a transportation device for to get their soul from one place to another or to to, to house their soul. It wasn't a sacred possession like it is here on Earth with humanity. A little bit like the driver of a car. Yeah. Uh, and then when the car got got worn out. Yeah, what? but a car that, that... I would liken it to a driver of a car, but everybody has exactly the same car. And there's okay. an endless supply of them. Okay. So you don't have to pay for it. Uh, you don't own it. It's not special. It's just mm. there. Mm. What would happen to these guys when, when their bodies died? Uh, they would just when get they're... a new one. They yes. lose their memories, is that right? Yes, they're, they're, uh, they, didn't, they didn't have death like we did. They did not forget. They knew before their body was going to die, and they just went ahead and got a new one. And, and this continued? Their body pretty much was gone after they left. So, yeah. And it continued, and this was, uh, for them, anywhere from two to four hundred years. Two to four hundred years would be the duration of one lifetime of their, for their body. Of their shells, yes. Their shells. Is, no, there's an interesting word you use. Was that a word that you saw in the documentation? That's how it was worded according to our representatives, yes. That's, okay. That's how it was described. What about names of military or uh, presidents at the time in the documentation? Was there any clear um, names that you recall? I, I remember reading Truman and Eisenhower, but no other... No other uh, names. No one more recent than that. No so one more recent than that. Your understanding is that Truman and Eisenhower did know uh, about the aliens' visit, visit. Well, I saw evidence that they did know. I think that most most presidents, if not all, from then on, do know. I don't know how much access they've had, but I think they know. Sure. Was there anything that you read that at, at that time in the in the nineteen eighties? that pertained to what then was in the future? In other words, uh, the year... Oh, what was coming? 2012. Oh, was coming, yes. Uh, talk about them... Uh, uh, what was described as a mass landing in 2012 at the end of the year. In 2000... At the end of 2012? Yeah. A mass landing? A mass landing. And... That was a date that you read in the documentation. At that stage, yes. that was an identified date. And was that going to be something that the aliens were telling the, the Americans was going to happen, or was that something that was being organized? Um, well, they were telling them that it was going to happen regardless of whether they wanted to or not. That they were going to come and make themselves known. And was there, was there a reason why they were choosing that year? Um, I'm not sure. I think that that year has been chosen for a long time. I just think there's a lot of civilizations um, that were on this planet, maybe still are, but some that were and are not anymore that knew of that date and why it was so important. So there's a sense of an inevitable future which we're rapidly approaching. Yes. And this is documented. Yes. And, I mean, it, I mean, Right now, we're not very many years away from this. No, we're not. <laughs> it, uh, how does that make you think and feel, given the experiences that you have? I welcome it because I don't think there's any, uh, any animosity toward us. I, don't, I, think it's, uh, I think what's going to be more disturbing is how the government handles it and decides to handle its citizens that maybe want to know more. Or... Do you have any observations or, or thoughts about 
how it's being handled at the moment. This is two thousand and six. Very, <laughs> Very poorly. Yeah. Very poorly. Yeah. So, if you were in charge of a disclosure operation, how would you do this? Yeah, Given the information have, that you know. If I had to start now, that's a tough job. I think it would have been started a long time ago. Mm. I think. Uh, I think that that. Uh, I would have publicized Roswell and not pulled that newspaper article and not pulled the reports off the radio. I would have let it continue and I would have welcomed more qualified and, and you know, scientists and stuff to come in and talk about this and so we could, you know, because it was observation at first until there was more communication until we discovered beings and that recovered beings that were alive because there was several crashes that were all mutilated and dead, of course, I mean. But there were crashes in which there were survivors. Yes, there was. Hmm. And there were, and and of the beings that didn't survive, there were autopsy reports yeah. as well. Yeah. So you actually saw some autopsy reports. Yes, I did. A few. Do you remember what you read in in those autopsy reports about their physiology and biology? Well, I remember reading about their blood being chlorophyll based and them not eating, ingesting as we do. They don't have stomachs. Don't have waste material that like we do, they don't have a traditional human. They're like a cross between like a plant and an animal and they gather their energy through absorbing minerals through their skin. And they use light for photosynthesis. Um, I'm just curious what your own personal experiences have been. Do you, have you ever had any, um, let's say, visitations since you left the job, uh, be they men in black and or alien visitations? Nothing. Never ever seen a UFO in my life. And I bet you wish you had. I, yep, so, so I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> no sightings, no, no. But, and no men in black. No MIB. No, no nothing. No, no nothing. Well, I've never done any of this before, so. Well, may that continue. Conjured up in the last two or three months of mm -hmm. talking with Mr. Ryan here. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for, for being so honest and coming forward so amazingly, forthrightly, and, um, you know, we've, we hope to hear more from you. Well, you probably will, and it was my pleasure. And this is a real service, so you're a brave man. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Bill Ryan and I'm the author of the serpa.org website which uh, went online in the middle of November 2005 and one of the features of the website was a contact form in which I encouraged visitors to the website to contact me with any information, comments, thoughts, questions that they might want to have. And of course my original intention was to encourage a dialogue about SERPO itself. But right from the start I was aware of the possibility that people might get in touch to talk about anything else, uh, which of course I welcomed. And one such here is a man who I'm talking to. It's a very great pleasure. I'm not going to identify him for obvious reasons. And he has a very interesting story to tell about his personal interaction with relics and documents and artifacts and films from a whole series of uh, alien encounters starting off with Roswell in 1947 and it became very clear that after this man contacted me just saying that he had an interesting story to tell and told me one or two little details about that I picked up that ball, recognizing that there's something here of some considerable importance. This has got nothing to do with the Serpo story, but it should be something that's of considerable uh, interest to every serious student of ufology. And 
I wonder if I could just ask you to summarize your story just in a couple of sentences, just so the, the viewers here will get an idea of why it was that I immediately seized on what you had to say and saw that it was important. Well, I had uh, my, my original contact had been that uh, I had seen nothing in my experience uh, that had to do with the Serpo story, but that I had other information. And uh, what that basically what that information was was that I spent six months at an aerospace company. I'm not a military person. I never was in the military. I spent six months archiving and filing artifacts, videos, films, pictures, and documents having to do with the government's involvement in UFO projects, uh, top secret, uh, secret eyes only, secret code word. Um, a lot of them were uh, to, uh, only to be opened by authorized personnel. I mean, I worked in, uh, in documentation, so I knew the markings on documents and I knew what I should have been able to see and in my regular line of work and what, you know, things that were marked incorrectly I had to mark also correctly, so I was involved in that sort of stuff in my work. Um, a lot of them were military that, that were not marked with any classifications whatsoever, which to me was kind of odd, but that's the way part of them were. They were just sealed envelopes with no markings whatsoever. And what, okay. what caught your eye um, the first time you, you came across this information that, that actually sort of turned your head? Uh, well, it, um, it is something that I had believed in for quite a long time and to be able to actually see proof of research and that sort of stuff. And this was, this was in, in which year? In the 1980s? This was, yeah, 84, 85. All right. And what did your job exactly entail and what kind of material did you find yourself holding in your hands during that time? Well, I was a, pretty much a file clerk with a, a security clearance. <laughs> And uh, I was brought items each day, and sometimes they were uh, to be divided up into different branches of service. Sometimes they were to be divided up in classifications. Sometimes they were to be divided up as to what the content was inside them. Um, most of them were sealed. Uh, but there were artifacts from crash ships. There were disks from crash ships. There were mostly pictures and documents from the U.S. government, and all branches of the government and also from aerospace companies. Could you tell us what kinds of stamps these documents contain? What kind of, uh, stamps, classification stamps.